can sell fast, right? Well, that's the plan. <laughs> All right. Take Thank it you. away, Mike. Thank you. Okay. Uh, oh, demos. I, uh, you know, as vice president, I thought, you know, I'd just be responsible for, you know, prostitution, um, gambling, drugs and alcohol for the club, you know, running those operations. But no, I get to schedule demos too. So I thought, okay. Um, it's, the whole impetus for this, this demo tonight is um, we had tops last month and, you know, quick and easy, fun to turn there, you know, on site, uh, which is a great, you know, opportunity to get people, you know, coming over to look to see what it is and, you know, interested and join the club. And, you know, that all flows with our charter, you know, what we're all about. So anyway, I was thinking of something else that we could do and uh, came across a video by, um, you guys have probably seen his videos. It's worth the effort. I don't know if Jack can pull it up. Show the, the title. Um, the guy's name is Sean Graham. I don't know where he's out of, but he's got oh, a couple dozen videos out there, and they're pretty good. Uh, this is, you know, like I say, getting into the craft fair, art fair kind of season, you know, in the summertime that, uh, you know, again, like when we did the uh, Artisans in the Garden out at the Overland Park Arboretum, you know, not everybody that comes out there is going to buy a, you know, four or five, $600 bowl. So stopping, uh, you know, these people with, with kids and so forth, I mean, they, they pick up a lot of tops and everything. And these cute little boxes, I mean, we're going to go through the process. And this is really more for making them in batches. I mean, there's not any great skills. There's only one thing you really need to be careful of when making these, and it's making this tenon right here, making it fit the, uh, we're stupid the mortise, which is a 5 8 inch drilled with a, uh, you'll see a uh, Forstner bit, but, you know, they're kind of cute. You can do anything on the outside with them. I mean, gosh, they don't have to be round. I mean, they're, they even look like things that they're not, like a cigar. So anyway, that's uh, what we're doing. The outside is, you know, totally up to you. It's artistic freedom. So anyway, um, like I said, the idea is, uh, well, in the video, he says how to turn uh, like a $12 box in 10 minutes. I think he's in a little higher market than we are here. But anyway, um, it's, like I said, the process about how to batch these things. And basically, it comes down to, I've got a handout here that we'll copy and put on the website and everything. But there's three stages to this process. And the first one is just cutting the blanks, Okay. Um, I'm sure all of the uh, top turners have got scrap laying around. What we're looking for is a uh, blank like this. One inch by one inch by six inches. Okay, it can be five and a half, but I mean, to have all of these the same size, and uh, you, we're going to do the inside first, it's quick and easy, like I say, if they're all the same size. And uh, the, the idea here is speed. And it's like, this isn't my best work, but it's the best work that I can do in the time allotted. You know, if you're going to do like a dozen of these or something, they're quick and easy. So, uh, uh, like, I don't finish the inside of them, you know, for 10 bucks or something. I'm not going to do that. But um, what I do, okay, I went down to Shooty, and they have got a whole bunch of five-quarter lumber, which is actual thickness one inch. This is a one by eight, seven and a, um, seven and a quarter inches wide. This is 18 inches long. So that you can take this over, you know, shameless plug. Um, you have a picture of my table saw jack in my shop. It's got all this stuff over it. Since I joined the guild, I just, you know, walk over there and use state of the art saw stop, you know, rip saw, cross cut saw and everything. And it's, right there. So my table saw is covered with all kinds of stuff. I need more storage in my shop. But anyway, get this and uh, with a one by eight or a you know, five quarter by eight, rip this into six uh, lengths 
or, and then uh, cross cut it. You got 18 blanks, quick and easy. Uh, down at Shooty, I think that, you know, it's like less than five bucks. You can get, you know, they've got all kinds of nice hardwood. I got uh, maple and birch. They've got, you know, everything down there. And like I say, it's, it's normally you think, of, you know, one by or two by or four by thicknesses of lumber. They've got, uh, like I say, a lot of five quarter, eight quarter, unusual kinds of things that you can't find at your big box stores. So anyway, uh, anybody have any questions about like where the, the lumber comes from or how, how you can make these blanks? It's really pretty simple and straightforward, but that's the first step in this process is preparing the blanks. Uh, what you do after I, you cut these up is uh, I go ahead, oh, I didn't bring my marking gauge. I mark the center and it's real important to have, and then I use a scratch all to dimple in the center, and then I mark right here, this is uh, the line to uh, cut for um, parting off the cap and the body, okay? So I have all these ready. I've got, you know, bunches of them all over here. So it's quick and easy to go through and to batch those out. And um, then the next step is to... Uh, drill and complete the inside joint. Uh, this is where you hollow the inside and cut the joint to fit the cap in the body. So what I do, and uh, let me go back to the impetus of this demo was from this uh, Sean Graham and Worth the Effort. He gets, uh, it's about an hour and six minute video. Uh, there are some good points that he makes quick that uh, really help save some time and some things that you might not think make a lot of sense really do. It's kind of fun. After you do three or four of these, you get into a rhythm and you can really crank them out pretty quick. And uh, this is um, one of the things that he's, he does is it uses spigot jaws, just crams the blank into the end of the end of the chuck. And he doesn't do what I did. I use I might mark the center on both ends so that this is in the center. It's held here. Otherwise, it gets out around. And uh, yeah, you can make a box out of it. The problem is you got to have it lined up perfectly. Otherwise, it's you know kind of off like this you know, when it's in there. This way, you can twist it, and it's always lined up. But when it's off center, it's real noticeable. So anyway, to prevent that, uh, put the uh, tailstock up with the live center right in the center of the, of the wood. Then we just have to uh, part the cap from the body. And to do that, let's see here. You can, uh, there's only one good way to really make this cut successfully, and that is to uh, have a homemade lathe tools, uh, thin parting tool, uh, shameless plug. Um, those will be for sale in the lobby after the show. So, anyway. There's a special today, today only. I think they're um, $25. Okay. This is a sixteenth of an inch. The reason you want to minimize how much you take out of here is because you want the grain to line up, okay? Uh, the tenon is going to be three quarters of an or three eighths of an inch long, so you're going to lose, and then with the cut about an eighth of an inch, you're losing half an inch. And you get nice straight grain, kiln dried hardwood, and uh, it's the less grain, the easier it is to line up so that you can, uh, it doesn't look like it's, you know, it comes apart. So anyway, minimize the amount of uh, material you take out when you're parting it. Do this. Now, I'm not worried about, you know, this twisting off here. I'm going to part it all the way through as opposed to, you know, 
taking it off and carefully cutting it with the saw because all the center's coming out anyway. So again, time-wise, you do this and you get rid of this longer part here is the body. You put it over here. Of course, you know which end is which, so the center is marked on the tail end of it. Put that there. Then you clean up the, uh, where my spindle gouge go? I had to spend half hour trying to find my half inch drill bit which felt rolled on the floor and was back here and couldn't find it. But we haven't got a demo if I haven't got a half inch drill bit. And I, you'll see, I marked the depth and everything. This, I just clean this up. And again, it's important to make a little dimple so that the drill bit can get centered. This is one of the things we need to maybe take a look at on our shop cleanup day. We need to ask, wax the, the bedways here, right, Anthony? Don't say that. So that's enough for the drill bit to get started. And first thing we're going to do is to drill the mortise for the cap or for the, uh, the body. 5 8 inch Forstner bit, okay? What's interesting is the distance here on the head is 3 eighths of an inch. That's what we want. There's a little black collar here that's an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to go in to where this black collar just disappears so that we're a little longer than the tenon. But that goes in here. And turn the speed way down. Hang on to the chuck. And there's your mortise. Now we need to switch. This is why it's always good to have two um, drill chucks or Jacob's chucks. Uh, I only have one, and I've got a Morris Taper three tail stock. And so, anyway, I ordered. It's supposed to be delivered today, but. It's okay, this works. One inch and then two and five eighths is the depth I've marked. I've marked in the flute, I don't know if you can see it, but from the overhead camera maybe, the, uh, the marks here, so you know just how far to go. <clears throat> Again, when you're batching these, Easy to do. Okay, the cap is done. Take it out. So we got the mortise, then we have a little hole here that uh, inside the cap, we'll set it aside. We're going to take the body, the same kind of thing. Again, put it in here without, you know, instead of trying to, you know, um, put tenons on here and everything, not necessary. This is good enough, especially then what I use to. Has that bottom been marked on this? 
Yep. I marked both sides of them. But this is where I just parted this off. You know, this was right here. So the grain, heck, you can see it right here, lines up. You don't want to, you know, put that in backwards because then the grain won't line up. But So you do that. And then I put this in. Right there. That center's marked. We put the, this back in, and we go two and five eighths to the long red mark. Should line up. I use this stuff called blade coat on uh, my bits and stuff, and it, it's amazing how well that stuff works. It's called blade coat. It comes in an aerosol can. You can't find it anymore. They call it something else now, but it's... Oh, and you have to have another special tool. Toothbrush. Clean out the flutes. It's the... The uh, sawdust or the, sh the shavings are the, uh, that causes the, fr the heat, the friction. So you want to keep that clean. And you guys have heard the story of why, you know, the, the toothbrush was invented in Arkansas. You know that? That's why it's called a toothbrush. Yeah, because if it was invented anywhere else, it'd be called a teeth brush. This is really hard wood, I think, and otherwise I would just try to push the tailstock into this. I think I need to oil this bit. Okay. Yeah, it, I mean, it, they start sharper, sharp longer, and it, uh, it's amazing the difference it makes. I, I'm sold on it. I've been using it for years. Well, yeah, but you can't get it anymore. It's called something else now, Dick. It's uh, uh, Bostic was the company that, that came out with it, and then I think uh, they got bought out by somebody else, and they changed the name, but it's... Same stuff. I need to find it, though. Okay. All right. So now, this is the only skill part of this whole demo that you need to pay attention to, and that is cutting the tenon on the end of this. I'll show you how I do it. I use 3 8 inch bedan. The thing is, I know the width of this is 3 8 of an inch. So I do that and just go over a little bit, and I know that the length of my uh, tenon is, will be correct. So, speed is your friend on little spindle stuff like this. And that's in there, tie's not going anywhere. With a peeling cut like that, you can just blast right through it. I don't want to splinter any of this. And again, after you do a few, you know about how far to go. Then, oops, you get your cap and you test fit it. That's got a ways to go. What I'm going to do is put a little... Uh, chamfer on that. This will help you get down to the size quickly. And then you try it again. While it's going, while the lathe is, is turning, you have a little 
burnish mark right there so you know how far to go. If I go about halfway down on this, that should be awfully close. I go for a square shoulder, or a length on the tenon, whoops. No, test this again. A little more. I'm gonna put back in that uh, chamfer. I tell you, it's better to have these too tight than too loose. It's amazing how you can loosen these up with just a little bit of oil or wax. I had a bunch that were really tight, and I put, uh, I just said, I grabbed some Ren wax and put it on there, and some of them are too loose. There's ways you can fix that too. I had a couple of those. What I did in that situation, I'll tell you right now, thin CA glue, just drizzle some on here, and then just let it you know, harden, and uh, it gives enough thickness to it and a little bit of bite that tightens it right up, fit fine. Doesn't look real good, but, and this is going on the way it's supposed to. Okay. Now, this is a process I go through for um, these. Batching these out, I would just take this out and then do another one. You know, and just keep them going that way. But uh, now what we can do is um, go to the artistic part of this. This is where you can do anything you want to the outside. It's, um, well, I got some over here that so I think I showed you. One looks like a cigar. One looks like a billy club. The other one, I don't know what it is, but it's not round. And um, I'll show you the finish and everything too, quick and easy finish. But uh, I was gonna make one that looked like a duck call. And uh, I don't know, I'm probably one of the least creative people I know. And so any ideas that you have what these things could look like would be great. Anyway, that's, uh, put this back between centers. I need a step center, a Morse Taper 2 step center, I forgot. Um, someone could grab one for me, that would be great. Okay. I see I'm supposed to tell a joke now, aren't I? Yes, David. Okay. Is it still available or? Okay, thanks. I love that stuff. And the, my can is like empty. So. Well, okay, I'll have to make that one work. We ha Kevin just bought a bunch of these, didn't he? Sorry, that's me. Hmm. Well, we'll see if we can make this one work. That'll work. Yeah, not very well. And I always have the cap end towards the headstock, and that's just just kind of a habit, I guess. Yeah, because I don't want to, you know, as I'm rounding this off, you know, hit that because then you got to sharpen your tools again. I guess there, we had a smaller one, but it didn't have a center to it. Well, we will make it work. Well, just pretend. Yeah. 
Okay, has anybody got any ideas what they want this one to look like? Okay, that's what we'll do. We're going to try. Okay. Um, now, we've got to get it round first. There's a lot of different ways to do that. And uh, this Sean Graham says, well, I'm going to do this one with uh, the way I normally do it because it works real well for me. You, you can move, remove a lot of material with a peeling cut on this. I'll go ahead and do it. Just lay it on there. Remember to always turn the lathe off before you move the tool rest. I use my spindle rubbing gouge like a um, like a skew, and that I usually use the wings. That's just kind of what I'm used to doing. This is working out good. Thanks. If you can leave it there, I, yeah, I, I'll do that for the next one. You can't get a better finish than you can off a skew. It's amazing. I've cut some stuff with a skew. I mean, for years I just used them as, you know, uh, open paint cans and stuff. But uh, they're, they're useful for this too. They really are. So, okay. Then I grab a spindle gouge. So we're going to make this one look like a baseball bat. I'm going to move this a little closer since we lost a lot of material. Okay. In fact, just for fun, we shape it out this way. One thing you don't want to do is go too deep. With the constraints, uh, the, 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 the dimensions here, it's going to we want it to resemble a baseball bat. I'm using a little more of the length there that we don't need all of that length, but since we have it, why not use it? And then There's this stuff called sandpaper that uh, works to make that smooth. 
Sandpaper's my friend. I sandpaper to open up my paint can. <laughs> <laughs> you have different paint cans than I do. A lot of people, okay, I paid my um, AA, AM, um, AAW dues, and there was an email I got that if you do that, you can download a free book. Well, there's a book about sanding, and it's interesting, but, and I've seen this before a lot of times. People sand way too fast. You need to slow it down, and uh, I like to sand in reverse, tell you the truth, because it is a little different. Doesn't take long. Again, this is not not my best work, but it's best you can do when, you know, this isn't a $400 bowl. It's, I think we can sell these for maybe, I don't know, 10 bucks. would be great. Trying to think of some more uses for them, okay? I mean, obviously, I tend to be more practical and see what people, what could we tell people that use them for? This, uh, in the video, this Sean Graham says, yeah, Bob, I know that, you know, you like barbecue, and after a barbecue lunch, a lot of times, you know, you, you're looking for a toothpick. Great toothpick holder, you know? Or someone who uh, sews, maybe a quilter, looking for, you know, sewing needles and stuff. You put a rare earth magnet down in the bottom, and so the needles don't fall out, and you, you know, find them in your carpet with your feet. Um, quick and easy to... Uh, with a rare earth magnet in there, you know, just to, they stay right in there, pull the cap off. If you live on the Missouri side, you can do medical marijuana. Yeah. Well, okay, that's another one. He says, yeah, he goes, every family has got a stoner in it, you know, and he goes, hey, you could use this to put it in. No, wait, he goes, I'm not going to enable you. No, no. But there's a lot of, uh, a lot of different things. I'm trying to come up with some other uses for it. Okay, that would be great. Yeah, cork, cork the bat. Well, and that's another thing I thought. See, I'm coming up with all these socially incorrect ideas, all right? And, uh, yeah. I know there's a number of people that, you know, smoke and... Run out for a cigarette break. You could put a cigarette, you know, ha make one look like a cigarette. Like you put it in the pocket and go out. You don't not break cigarette and everything, but have a smoke break and then, you know, come back in. That's the idea. So. So what do you think? Has anybody got any hot ideas on... Oh, I'm not done yet. Wow. Not done yet. Also, you know how it doesn't seem like they do that anymore. It seems like a lot of the professional players are wearing gloves now, but it used to be tape wrapped around the handle. I can do that. In fact, let's do that now. And uh, I just use a skew. A little skew. What I'm going to do, too, i got to find the joint here. Where this is put together, the cap and the body, you want to make sure you, you chamfer that because oil and stuff is going to get in there anyway, and it's going to darken it. And so even though you can't see it now, you will after you put oil on it. So, uh, And if, again, the, the grain is not lined up perfectly, this helps to uh, hide that. There it is. So, that opens that up. Oops. And then I just put some of these in here. Oh, damn. 
I knew I forgot something. I was going to look for my wars. Put, put a piece of war on there and burn those lines in. Quick and easy and fun. So that's, um, I'm going to get this ready. Then we're going to finish it. I'll show you the finish I'm using. Um, what this Sean Graham uses is walnut oil and beeswax. And so, it takes just a little bit. This is why you can finish it and it dries and everything right here. Um, some people say don't ever use cloth on the lathe. Well, this doesn't shred like paper towel does, and I don't wrap my fingers around it. I do other things with my fingers. Um, so, it's when I, oh, parting this off. He had a thing, and I was, look, I was drinking the Kool-Aid. I've seen this video about four times, and uh, he talks about using, you know, I have a little saw and a lot of different ways of, you know, parting something off. But he said, when you have that little nub on the end, use a Sloyd knife. Well, I got a Sloyd knife. I got it when I was going to make uh, you know, cut green uh, or spoons out of green wood and uh, put the Scandi grind on it, you know, real sharp. I went to cut off the little thing. And my knuckle was just above the top of that. And it was one of those slow motion things. It's like, oh, that's not good. I can see what's going to happen. And then I saw it go right through and flip up and everything. And I thought, okay. It was so sharp, you know, you couldn't feel it. I thought, okay, wait for it, wait for it. <laughs> you know. So I found a Band-Aid real quick. And whoa. It doesn't take much oil. Oh, I have a boo boo. What he does is this just a little bit of oil, then gets the dry por portion and bakes it in. And this dries it, and I think it really forces it into the pores of the wood because it's amazing how well it works. What's that? Uh, yeah, thanks. That'll work. Thanks. This was a, a Rick Bywater idea for the, uh, yeah, the uh, basket weave um, boxes. Make those look a little better. There we go. Sean, maybe this looks like an old time baseball bat. Then, 
Let my rank go. This is really a nice finish. Then uh, you'll see what really makes it pop here. Okay. We have the bees to thank. Don't need very much of this. It's kind of tricky in these grooves. But put too much on, it gets sticky. Okay. Now we just need to part it off, and it's done. So this has only been, what, an hour on this one? <laughs> Okay, special parting tool. Anybody got any questions? I'm parting, I'm cutting this not right where I want it off. I'm leaving a little bit of a nub so that this doesn't, you know, when it twists off, it doesn't pull out the end grain. Can't sand that out. That's it. So what we do now, see I am brave. I did bring my Sloyd knife. This is a Mora, um, they're made in Sweden. It's, it's for carving, wood carving. It's uh, the Scandi grind is not a concave or a convex, it is just a straight V. I mean, they're, they're straight sides. And it kind of chips out when it cuts. They really... Keep them on knuckle down, let me tell you. This thing is sharp. Uh, you know, I, I maintain it, it. It took an hour or so to, you know, sharpen this and put the grind on it. And then uh, I've got straps and everything that I use to maintain it, but it's unbelievable. It's looking from above or here's what I'm trying to do. Even with this ingrain, you see how well that cuts? How clean that is, I mean you can see. You need to stick your knuckle up a little bit higher. Yeah. I've done that. <laughs> Not going to do that again. It's one of those, and especially the last day or so, you know, it's like, it reminds you how much you use your fingers, you know. You're constantly reminded of it. Wouldn't sandpaper also do that without... <laughs> well, that nub, it'd take longer. Again, we're, we're, time is money here, Dick. Sword yeah. I got a whole pocket full of them. So, now we finish this off with, that was successful, I, no, no blood. I just find a clear place.
put this down and do this. Looking good. Okay. Then there's enough oil left in this rag. Make it look great. I'm not going to worry about beeswaxing it, but that's it. Any questions? Should we do? No, we haven't got time to do another one. So that's the idea. Like I say, being able to batch produce something quick and easy that we can sell at art and craft fairs and maker fair, Irish fest, you name it, you know, that uh, we can, you know, raise some money for the club. And it's interesting, you know, we can turn these on site and, uh, you know, people always stop and look and, you know, it doesn't take a great deal of skill. I mean, uh, the only thing you got to be careful of is cutting that tenon in the end of the uh, body for the cap to go on. So, what do you think? Was it worthwhile or yeah. you just waste an hour? Oh, thank you. Okay. Um, I think now your objective is to select the challenge for next month. Oh, what would that be? What Ooh. would that be? Uh, since we're talking about batch, you know, in production, let's say two EDC boxes. And I'm really looking forward to that because we'll see what all the creative minds come up with in terms of what they look like. <laughs> I'll get lots of ideas. Okay. So. You heard it. EDC boxes, two e of them. Yeah. For the challenge next month. Everyday carry. That's what he named them. See? They're, they're so neat that you want to carry it with you every day. <laughs> Are you drinking the Kool-Aid here, Rick? <laughs> well, thanks, Mike. Thanks for your demo and, and your time there. Thank you. Appreciate it.